In this video, I'll be talking about ASC's functions for building surfaces. So you can see the documentation on their website describes some of the features about building different uh, faces of different crystals, such as FCC and HCP. So in Spider, I have a Python script to use one of these functions. At the top, there are some import statements for functions that we need from ASE. At the top here, I defined a variable for the lattice constant. So ASE can use experimental lattice constants as the default, but in DFT for a certain functional and van der Waals correction, the lowest energy lattice constant in the calculation is not necessarily the same as the experimental one. It should be close, but might not be exactly. And so when you're doing calculations, you should use the optimal value for that level of theory. Otherwise, you're essentially running calculations on a system that is strained. I have computed these constants for gold and used a value previously determined for copper. If you change your functional or are you going to use a different crystal, then you should do calculate the optimized lattice constant yourself. There's a tutorial on the VAS website. This line calls the FCC111 function from ASE to define a slab or a surface set of atoms. Uh, so you define the name of the element, the lattice constant, and the size is the x, y, and z, or the multiples of the lattice coordinates. So in this case, it would be a five layer slab and a six by six cell. And then the vacuum parameter is the distance in angstroms above and below the slab. And for the 111 surface, you have a rhombic unit cell. It can be more convenient to have a rectangular one. Um, so this orthogonal tag is valid if this number is, in, is even. So if we look at the surface, here we have the 111 atoms and the two lattice vectors. The orthogonal basically gives you a rectangular cell in this direction rather than following B. And the values that you specify would be the number of vectors in each direction to define the cell. So these two lines are used to set the bottom two layers of this lab fixed so that they don't move from their optimized positions. And finally, we have something to write out this set of atoms in a format that VASP will recognize. So if we run this, it runs fine. And we can see in the directory where I've run this, there's a new Postcar file. Can open this in a text editor. Now I'll update later. And you can see it has the features of the regular, of the vast POSCAR with certain layers fixed, indicated by F, and then corresponding higher layers set. And this is actually set three layers fixed. So I'll have to fix that. If we want to look at this file, then there are two programs that I use to visualize VASP structure files. One is VMD, which you have to download by sending, making an account. You can choose the appropriate version here. There's also Vesta that's commonly used. Uh, I'm more used to using VMD, but Vesta is more convenient sometimes. Vesta also has some way of defining crystal surfaces, but I haven't investigated it at all.
Okay. So we can find the molecule that we created. Not the molecule, but the surface. So it doesn't recognize because Postcard don't have files don't typically have a file extension because they're just text. So it usually assumes it's PDB as a default, and if you but there's a plugin to load vast Postcard files. If you lead it, you see a bunch of cyan dots in the background. The other thing, one thing is that this program doesn't tend to remember which directory you last opened. Uh, but one thing that's convenient is if you load a molecule, then you can select and press enter to copy the text and then change to that directory with CD. And the other thing I often do when I start the program is uh, load a visualization state to change the default colors and display. So you can see now we have some still cyan dots, but on a white background. And I like to turn the axes off. So if you go to representations, it opens up this dialog. You can change the coloring method, which doesn't do very much at the moment. Uh, and then there are basically two useful choices for the elements. Why didn't CPK work? So CPK makes them uh, is a ball and stick representation. And you can see we have our five layers of copper atoms, and they're now copper colored. A space filling model can be found with VDW, which gives the van der Waals radii. So now you can actually see the top layer atoms a little bit more. Uh, one useful feature for visualization is to turn on the cell using this command. So now you can see your cell and you can see that there's vacuum spacing above and below. And one other useful option is this, are these periodic images. So we can add X and Y to get more of an extended surface. And also Z so we can check. repeating cell. And if we draw more images of these, we can see that they seem to look like they should. You can select certain layers by specifying in here a selection based on Z or based on indices. You can label certain things, so you can label atoms if you click on them. And you can see in this command line interface, it shows you some information about it, like the XYZ coordinates and the index. Atom 171. You can use a different label, and these have key shortcuts uh, to label distances. So right now it's white on white and it's hard to see, but it's 2.57, which is what it should be for the calculated parameter. So can kind of assume that the program did an acceptable job. It looks like all of the atoms are there. One thing which I found recently is that ASE has a function to define different unit cells. 
So with the standard FCC 111 or 110, uh, that set of functions, you can pick cells which are multiples of the lattice surface lattice vectors. But sometimes the molecule does not line up exactly along the lattice vectors. And the so if you wanted to, for instance, select this the cell corresponding to this epitaxy matrix, uh, which is one that I had to find for Penguis molecule, um, one of his systems, the organometallic is along here. Uh, this is somewhat incorrect, but it basically, this is the cell for an organometallic of DBB on copper 111. So to build that cell, I can go to my other script, which I call build epimat. So this starts similarly, it imports a couple more functions, uh, uses the same lattice constant. Here, I define initially a one by one by five uh, cell with a vacuum layer of nine. So this is to get one atom and five layers. And then it uses this cut function, which takes in this primitive cell with one atom, defines two vectors uh, that it should include the atoms for and the number of the layers is five. You can play around with these. It might not be necessary. I think this five and this nine gives you the right dimensions of your cell. Uh, if you don't have them, then what you end up with afterwards might not be correct. And when you run this function, it um, makes the order of your atoms kind of ugly. And so I use the sort function to sort based on tags. The tags seem to indicate the layers of each of the atoms. And here, this should be the correct way of specifying the uh, constraints to fix the atoms. So if I run that, open this now. So here it's sorting from the top of the cell to the bottom. There are fewer atoms in the cell. Uh, you can see the top layer is free, the next layer is free, third layer is free, fourth is not, and fifth is not. Those two are fixed. We can go minimize some things. To see our VMD windows again. Uh, one useful command here is mole new. I called this CU111 underscore 3344. And if you say type POSCAR, it knows to use the POSCAR plugin. And another handy trick is under extensions, visualization, clone representations. You can set this to the one that you want and then set this to displayed. But here, I actually don't want the top layer necessarily. So you can see we have a nice, extended system can turn off these periodic images. I'm going to select the right molecule. So because uh, of the way it cuts, it's a little less neat and tidy. These ones end up uh, closer to the top part of the cell, but you can see, actually, I will select the top layer again and then 
draw these. So you can see now uh, if I added the some phenylenes running across that I could have them going in the 1, 1, bar 2 direction. So it gives us a rectangular cell where everything is rotated 30 degrees, which is what I wanted. Uh, I can check some layers below using this. So that should be the next one, more or less. So it seems fairly. Seems to have done everything correctly. Okay, I'll stop this video here, but the next one will be on adding molecules now that we have a surface.